the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Welcome to this celebration of the first Sunday of Advent and it is good to be here in the church of St. Leonard's Walton Midale. Welcome to the parishioners of St. Leonard's, of St. Aidan's in Bamba Bridge and St. Lawrence's Chorley as we celebrate this great mystery of faith. In this season of Advent, the church prepares to celebrate the coming of Jesus. We recall the past, celebrate the present and look to the future with hope. We prepare to celebrate not only the birth of Jesus, but also his presence in our world. We wait for the coming of the Lord at the end of time, when all hopes will be fulfilled. We await the coming of the light that will shine in the darkness, shining light on our path to peace. On this first Sunday of Advent, we light our Advent wreath, our first candle. But before that, I'm going to bless our wreath. Lord God, bless this wreath and let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May it remind us of the hope and joy that Jesus brings into the world. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This week we recall the hope that we have in Christ. The prophets of Israel all spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a saviour would be born, a king in the line of David. They spoke of how he would rule the world wisely and bless all nations. Loving God, we thank you for the hope you can give to us. Help us to prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming and help us live holy and righteous lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. We call to mind our sins during a moment of silence. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. 
through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to listen to the word of God from Holy Scripture. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these great things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts the slaves in charge, each week with his, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And may I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. What's your earliest images and recollections and experiences of God? Just have a think back. And then, 
how do they compare with your images and experiences of God today? My earliest experiences was of a God of someone who was always watching me. Almost as if he was always waiting to catch me out. Someone who could see what I was doing 24-7. Someone who knew what I was thinking. And it was quite terrifying. It was like having a divine stalker who was judging me all the time. I remember being told when I made my, made my first Holy Communion that each time I received Holy Communion the white communion wafer would cover a black mark on my sinful soul and the whiter my soul the more chance I would have of going to heaven but the blacker the soul well there was only one place she was going and it wasn't up I was seven years old at the time Looking back, I'm not surprised that many people of my generation have walked away from their faith. Because if the God they were introduced to was a finger-pointing, angry tyrant, why do they want to have any relationship with him? The mention of the love of God was few and far between. I think such an image of God as I, I guess, experienced in my childhood, I find today to be totally unappealing and unhealthy and dare I say it wrong and sadly in the wrong hands it becomes a tool of power of control of exploitation and abuse and it does untold harm to people's lives and self-image and relationships it's not Christian Despite these early experiences, my belief and faith in God somehow survived. But I know that it survived really and greatly because I was blessed to be nurtured as I continue to be by my parents and their faith and by their unconditional love of each other and of me. A love that I know now to be a real reflection of God's unconditional love. However, I have to say that it was a while before I embraced the notion that God is love, unconditional love, and not a scowling, beardy bloke staring down at me from on high, wagging a finger, waiting to catch me out and punish me at the first opportunity. And I guess it was my experience of the charismatic renewal movement in my teenage years, and an experience of a real outpouring of the Holy Spirit that revealed to me both the joy and the challenge of being the follower of Jesus. And it was this that really started the lifelong journey of faith that I'm engaged in, with all its ups and downs, understanding and experiencing a loving and forgiving God who actually wants nothing but the best of me. There's no finger wagging going on. The season of Advent focuses on the second coming of Jesus in its early days and that day of reckoning or the day of judgment. The angry, scowling God is back, isn't he? Well, actually, no, he's not. The gospel reading that we receive today can be perceived as being terrifying and threatening if we're not careful. And I guess the language doesn't help. We hear things like, beware, watch out, stay awake. It's going to happen when you least expect it. Don't get caught out. The sun's going to dim. The clouds are gathered. Darkness is going to cover the earth. Angels are going to be coming and to and fro and everywhere. And the Son of Man will descend from heaven in power and glory. It's a terrifying vision, almost horror movie, edge of the seat stuff. We know that artwork over the centuries displays the day of judgment in such a terrifying way with souls either floating to heaven or being cast into a fiery hell. I think of the music that we experience in the Requiem Mass that accompanies the Dies Irae section, the God of Wrath Judgment Day. It's full on scary music. Google Mozart's Requiem or Benjamin Britten's War Requiem 
Have a listen to the days that they write and you'll know what I mean. But I plead with you, please do not hear or read today's gospel in such a way. Yes, the message Jesus is giving us is one aimed at keeping us on our toes, but not in a threatening way, rather in a positive way. Throughout the Bible, we see of God who is frustrated, who is forever trying his best to win his people back, speaking through leaders and prophets that he sent to a people he loves. But there are people who keep straying and doing their own thing, a people who get bored of God and create their own new sparkly gods like the golden calf. Gods that are self-satisfying, self-promoting, but gods that ultimately lead to emptiness and dissatisfaction. Just have a think about what gods there are that might distract us as we journey towards Christmas. Which gods might be worshipped at the expense of the God who took our human form, who was born and lived among us. The coming of Jesus in earthly time is the ultimate visible manifestation of God's love for us. Jesus becoming one of us, dying for us and rising for us to break the bonds of sin and death once and for all. Jesus showing us that God is love. Showing us that the God of love doesn't want to lose a single one of his beloved creation. Jesus showing us that God's plan since the fall of creation has always been that one day all will be restored to perfection in God. And that day will come. And that's what Jesus is telling us in this gospel. And he's saying to us simply in the gospel, make sure you're ready. Make sure you don't miss out. Just as the leaders and the prophets of the Old Testament were forever calling their people to turn back to God, so too does Jesus. And he gives us the way and the example to follow, the example of love. Jesus shows us how to see people, how to speak to people, how to hear people, how to treat people. It's so easy to see judgment in a negative frame, something that's meant to put us down, even send us down. And in that sense, it is truly terrifying. Yet in reality, the judgment we will face is in our hands. Because it will be a reflection of who we are. And I wonder actually if God will have many, if any words to say to us when we meet him. Because on the day of judgment, he can simply hold a mirror before us and see what's reflected back. Do our lives, do the lives we live, have the lives we have lived, reflect the love of God? If we live lives that sincerely try to do so, if we have the grace to say sorry for our sins and mess ups, and to seek God's forgiveness and each other's forgiveness, if we are sincere in our efforts to try again, and really to try not to repeat the same mistakes, then we should have no fear of Judgment Day. We should have no fear of meeting Christ when he comes again. And I think the beautiful reading that we heard from Isaiah backs this up. We get a real sense that God's people realise that they've messed up again and that God is frustrated again. And there's even acknowledgement that God has every right to be angry with them. But alongside all of this, there is contrition. And this leads to the beautiful imagery of the people being clay in the potter's hands. Clay in God's hands. And we know, of course, that when a potter is working clay, he or she can always start again if it goes wrong. Or if there's any imperfections. Can simply squish it all together, bit of water on it, throw it back down, start working again. But once the clay has been fired and set, then it's too late. It can't be reshaped. And if it's dropped, it will shatter. 
God doesn't want that for us. He doesn't want us to be people who break, to be people who are irreparable. He wants nothing more for us than to be people who turn back to him when we invariably get things wrong with our thoughts, our words and our deeds. For us to be the clay that can be held lovingly and carefully in his hands. That he can remould us, that he can reshape us, that he can repair us. Hear again Isaiah's words. You are our father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hands. So to take, please do take today's gospel reading in a positive light. Take both readings in a positive light. Let them be a reminder of the truths of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. But be people whose lives reflect Jesus. Be people who are prepared to own up to their sins. Be people who are prepared to ask for forgiveness. Be people who are prepared to welcome Jesus again with joy, not fear. Be people who are prepared to be remoulded by God. Be a part of God's plans for perfection at the end of time. And as we begin this great season of Advent, we pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mould us, fill us, use us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Because we believe that God will come to our help, we present our prayers. For believers everywhere who wait for the Lord's coming, that this Advent may help them prepare. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the people who look forward to the celebration of Christmas, that Christ's words and values may find a place in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world that are experiencing war, poverty and human suffering, made all the worse by Covid. May leaders work together to end war, alleviate poverty and suffering and provide vaccines that will defeat Covid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
For people trying to rebuild their lives after the experience of abuse or violence and the betrayal of trust. That they may know the intimate love of God on whom they can rely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from anxiety, for all who are sick in mind or body, remembering especially Robert Keith, Catherine Chowns, Gwen Taylor, that they may know the Lord's healing power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that God's light may shine on them and bring peace and comfort to the bereaved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hosts, your hand protects your chosen people. Listen to our prayers, we ask you, and grant them for your name's sake. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us, to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. As this bread was scattered and then gathered and made one, so may your church be gathered into your kingdom. Glory to you, O God, for ever. Wisdom has built her a house. She has mixed her wine. She has set her table. Glory to you, O God, for ever. Father, from all you give us, we present this bread and wine. As we serve you now, accept our offering and sustain us with your promise of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son, for when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world, to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, might heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Apostles, St. Leonard, St. Aidan, St. Lawrence, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As we await the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we, we are many, we are one body, body because, because we, we all share in one bread. bread. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You have, you have opened, opened to, to us, us the scriptures, O Christ, Christ, and you, you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide, abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end, behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. If I could just uh, have the attention, please, of the parishioners from uh, St Aidan's and St Leonard's just for a moment with one or two notices. Well, as we know, we have the great news that our churches can reopen for public worship on Wednesday, the 2nd of December. And so we will resume our Wednesday Eucharists, St Aidan's at 10 o'clock in the morning and St Leonard's at 7 o'clock in the evening. And then next Sunday, we are back to normal with 9.30 at St. A at St Leonard's and 10.45 at St Aidan's. And the Sunday booking system reopens on Monday morning, so please uh, have a look on your notices on the orders of services that are available to you and all the details of how to contact me are in there to book your place. Looking ahead, um, we all know that Christmas is going to be uh, somewhat different for all of us uh, this year, both at home, in our homes and in our churches. And we've been racking our brains as a ministry team about how best to go about offering our Christmas services this year. And we've had to make some difficult decisions regarding which are the most practical and the safest ways to approach and celebrate Christmas in church. And we know, obviously, that one of the biggest, um, I guess, things that's holding us back is the fact that um, our capacity in both our churches is vastly reduced, which means that we can't have as many people in for the services, which is particularly um, not good because we know that at Christmas our churches are usually fuller than normal. Sadly then, we've had to make a decision that this year there can be no carol services, that's for obvious reasons, we're not allowed to sing yet. Um, and nor will there be a Chris Dingle crib service or Midnight Eucharist this year. However, a crib service will be made available to view online for all of us in our parishes, and also this will be shared with our two primary schools so it can go out to all the children and their families. In order to work out how busy our churches might be for services this Christmas, our initial plan is to offer two Christmas Eucharists in both parishes. The first will be on Christmas Eve at 5.30 in the evening, the second on Christmas Day at 10 o'clock, and again, in both churches. If we're reaching uh, seating capacity in both churches, myself and Reverend Nick are prepared and absolutely willing to offer additional services to make sure that we can cater for everybody. But in order to help us work out the numbers, um, I'm inviting you now, please, to uh, sign up for a Christmas service to let me know uh, which your preference would be, whether it would be on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day. So please, as you would do with your normal Sundays, I ask you from uh, tomorrow morning if you will contact me in the usual way and let me know which Christmas service you would like to attend and at which church, so either the Christmas Eve or the Christmas Day, and of course then leave uh, the names of all those who wish seats together with contact phone numbers. And as I say, once we know how things are filling up, then we will be, know whether or not we need to uh, offer additional services. And we will be making this information available to the wider community through our social media. And please do let your families, friends, neighbours know what's happening as well so that they can be part of um, our celebrations. Um, the call to pray and give, now that we're back in church from next week, envelopes and uh, pledge cards are available in church. I do please uh, bring this to your attention and invite you please to make uh, a generous offering 
um, for your parish to help uh, your parish get through uh, the current crisis and to give us, I guess, a bit of a financial leg up. Um, please do pick up an envelope when you're next in church and then bring your pledge back um, and pop it on the collection plate. And thank you in anticipation of your generosity. And finally, to help us use this great season of Advent well, we have uh, an Advent series this year called The Four Last Things. Um, and traditionally, Advent focuses on death, judgment, heaven and hell. And thanks to our friends and colleagues over at St Lawrence's, uh, we're uh, joining in with some sessions that they have prepared to offer an online uh, Advent programme for this year. And it's on each Tuesday of Advent starting this coming Tuesday between 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock and each week there will be four different speakers speaking on the individual topics of death, judgment, heaven and hell and then following um, their talk, following their introduction to the theme there will be then an opportunity for discussion and for prayer and this will all be done via Zoom. So please if you want to join in please uh, email events at stlawrencechorley.co.uk and you will get uh, a link. Please do use this time of Advent well. Use the opportunities that are there. This Advent course is replacing Bible study during Advent, so we encourage everybody who has been doing the Bible study, please just come rather than on a Monday night, come over to Tuesday night. Let's use Advent well and let's make our preparations for the coming of our Lord at the end of time and at Christmas as good as they can be. God bless you. Stay safe. And so we ask for God's blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.
Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair. Lord, in the suffering, this is our prayer. Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace. Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase. Shelter for fragile lives, cure for their ills. Work for the craftsmen, trade for their skills. Land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak. Says to plead the cause of those who can't speak. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion. We pray, melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love.